Hello everybody and welcome back to another Hacker Tools video. Today we are going to be looking at an HTTP parameter discovery tool, Aryan. Let's jump straight into it. Aryan is not your regular discovery tool, it's not a fuzzer, it doesn't just brute force with a ton of requests. No, Aryan is going to find parameters, so get parameters, post parameters, uh, all of that, by only sending a handful of requests. It can scan over 25,000 different parameters in just 25 requests, which is just amazing. So this tool is really cool because you don't need to wait for a long time for it to finish. It can do everything pretty quickly because it only sends a handful of requests. But why are we talking about all of, all of this when we should be getting into the tool and using it? So right here you can see my screen, my Kali screen. I just installed this tool by running apt install and then Aryan. And installing the tool is as simple as that. But when you have the tool present, you can just run Aryan with a dash H for the help page and so on. However, let's start our first scan here. And for that, we need a target. Now I've written this, quickly written this application here, um, which is very simple, but it returns hello world if I run this. Hello world. Okay, what if there's a hidden get parameter here that does something different? Can we enumerate that? For that, let's use Aryan. So we can do aryan u to supply a URL. So I'm gonna supply my URL here, port 5000. And if I run this, we see that within set seconds, aryan finds uh, this name flag or, or the parameter flag seemingly, and it uh, found it by examining the body length. So apparently, if there is a get parameter flag present, the body length could be different. And let's actually assess that. So I'm gonna do a curl request with flag equals test. And if we run that, we get a flag, a fake flag here, integrity, how did you find this? Well, using Aryan, of course. And that is the basics of this tool. That is all there is to know here. It's super simple to use. However, let's dig a little deeper and let's look at what Aryan is doing on the back, in the background. And in order to do that, we're gonna set up a proxy so that we can see the requests that Aryan sends. All right, so I'm gonna run my Aryan scan again, but this time I'm gonna give it a proxy here. So Aryan uses um, requests, so we can set a proxy by uh, just supplying the HTTP proxy. Uh, I have um, burp running, so that's running on my local host again, on port 8080. So now if I run this, I will see that here I get the request and the first request is a just a get of slash. I can send that. Then we get a, a get with a random get parameter and another one and these get requests are here so that Aryan has a sense of what a normal request should look like. But what do we see here? We see a ton of get parameters here. And I'm gonna forward these and we see a, a bunch of requests with a ton of get parameters. This is where all the brute forcing comes into play or the brute forcing comes into play. It just tries all of these get parameters and when it sees a difference in the page length, it will then know, okay, one of the parameters in this whole list uh, did something. So I'm just gonna run through all of this here. It's uh, 15 requests, I believe, something like that, uh, depending on obviously the size of your word list. And then at some point we are gonna see this become smaller. Right here you saw it. Currently the requests we're sending now, they contain less parameters. Uh, and that's because we've run through all of them and we've identified that some of them have returned other data. And now we're trying to figure out what exact parameter returned the different amount of data. So was it this one or this one? Well, uh, we're gonna forward that. I think I might have waited too long here. So let's run that again really quickly. Let's go through all of these until we get back to this point. Right, we were here. And now we see that the, the amount of parameters is even less, even less this time, and it keeps on going lower because it always, when it finds a valid one, it cuts the request in half, and it says, okay, let's see if this half returns something different or this half, and that way it can identify which halves contain uh, the keyword here. 
and in this case we see flag right there. So I'm just going to keep on sending these and in the end we find that flag is the only one left uh, and we can send that and that's when Aryan finishes and says, well, I found a flag. And that's really what Aryan does and it's really cool because it can do it so efficiently. So don't use your normal fuzzers for identifying HTTP parameters, use Aryan for it because it is so much more lightweight, it's way less stressy on the server, all that. Um, so yeah, definitely consider using Aryan in your toolchain. Is this all that Aryan can do? do? No, of course, Aryan can do so much more. So let's go over some of the features in its help page. So Aryan dash dash help will throw that page up for us. And here we can first of all see the dash W parameter to supply a word list. Aryan has a word list of about 25,000 uh, parameters, but if you wanna make it bigger, you can supply your own word list here. Then with dash M uh, to supply a method, we can also do very interesting things because we can not only send a get request, we can also send a post request. We can even send JSON data. Um, so let's play around with that. Let's see how that looks. Um, so I'm gonna run this request again. But this time I'm gonna say, well, the method is going to be post. And let's look at what a post looks like. So a post request is as we expected with the parameter there. All right. Let's see what JSON looks like then. So if I supply the method JSON, now we see that it just supplies all the parameters in JSON format here. Very nice, very quick and easy to work with, obviously. So that those are those two methods um, and that's really cool. There are obviously even more features in Aryan. Aryan also has this dash dash passive feature and this one is really cool because it just collects parameter names from passive sources. So it goes through the Wayback Machine, Common Crawl, and these sources, and just looks for parameters that were found in there. So that way you can also passively get some parameters that you maybe otherwise wouldn't find. Uh, very cool, always useful to run on your target. Now I wanna talk about output, because obviously we need to output everything in a nice way. Uh, Aryan obviously prints out the result, but we can do different things. We can, for example, uh, have Aryan output it as a JSON file, just as normal text file or in burp. And this is really cool. So let's uh, try all of these out. So I'm gonna run my Aryan uh, request again. And this time I'm gonna say, okay, my OJ, so my JSON file, output to JSON, my text file, output to file, and then O capital B. It's interesting because now we can supply uh, our proxy again. Um, all right, let's set this up. Uh, that should be 80, 80. There we go. Now, this is not the best thing because I still have the proxy uh, set up in the request. So let's also quickly change that. Go to the beginning here, remove this. So we're not doing this proxy thing twice. All right, so it found the flag and uh, apparently it has some error here. Did I not set this up correctly? Um, mm -mm -mm. It's failing to establish a connection to here. So I may just need to supply only this. Let's try that out. And yes, that was it. Uh, you only need to supply your IP address and then your port. Um, and then you get the result. So if it finds a valid one, you just get it in burp, which is really simple because then you can just send it to the repeater and send a request in the repeater and look at the response. So it's a very nice thing to have as well, if you know how to use it. Besides that, we have some more parameters that I'm gonna go over very quickly because these are some of the, for example, bug bounty parameters, I like to call them uh, the dash D to set some delay between requests. So if the program only allows one request per second, make sure that you have this delay uh, set to one second. And even with a delay of one second, your scan will only take half a minute. So yeah, it's very easy to adhere to these rules with this tool. Then we can also set specific headers. So if you need to set a specific cookie or a header, uh, if that's needed for your program, then be sure to set it with this one. Now, lastly, let's cover some speed related um, things here. 
so for example, dash T for threads, you can set the amount of concurrent threads that are being used. With dash capital T, you can set a timeout. So if a request doesn't respond in this time, uh, you're just gonna drop it, time it out. Uh, then with dash C, and that's an interesting one, we can set the chunk size. Now the chunk size is the amount of parameters that are sent in a single request. So in this case, you saw that they were uh, there were a lot of them. However, maybe there is some WAF that's saying, oh, you can only have uh, these this amount of parameters, then you can change your chunk size here to make sure that the, the scan works properly. Uh, lastly, there's also a dash dash stable if you want stability over speed. Um, so if something is going wrong, I suggest using that one. But those are really most of the parameters that Arya has to offer. There are more, and if you want to read more about all of these, there is a great wiki page on their GitHub. So look at Arian's GitHub uh, to learn more. But that's really it for Arian. It's a really great tool that found a way to solve a problem that was very, very verbose in the past. Um, and does it in a nice way, efficiently and very quickly. And I like that. I think this is a really cool tool that we should all in integrate in our uh, toolbox for bug bounty hunting. Uh, let's stop with just making the server explode from the amount of requests we're trying to do with our fuzzers. And let's do it in a smart way like Aryan is doing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you back in all of our other videos in the past and in the future. Check out the playlist for all the hacker tools and check out our academy if you want to learn more about hacking and bug bounty. Anyways, I hope to see you next week.